In this video, we're going to use Geoda to run a local spatial autocorrelation statistic, the Geddes and Ord statistic. First, we're going to use Geoda through apps.ufl.edu. If you're not a UFL apps user, you can download Geoda from the Geoda website and install it locally on either a Mac or a Windows machine. If you navigate to the Spatial Data Science, the Center for Spatial Data Science at the University of Chicago, the software is downloadable here. When you first open Geoda, keep in mind compared to other desktop software you may be used to, such as ArcGIS or QGIS, the map windows are going to be detached from the main toolbar here. So this will always be floating separately from any maps or analyses you create. Just like with our desktop GIS, we can navigate to File, Create a Project, and we can go search for uh, different data table or uh, geospatial data such as a shapefile to begin this process. So I'm going to navigate to a series of data that were developed uh, as part of this e exercise and are described in a separate video about QGIS and building a fishnet. So for this example, I'm going to have a fishnet, which will be a series of square polygons that contains some data about some outbreaks. So when I open those, we can see here I have a polygon file that contains 982 polygons, and then inside of those we have some information about how many outbreaks happened. When we're performing these local spatial autocorrelation statistics, we have to develop the weights matrix. And the weights matrix is what keeps track of which polygons are neighbors with other polygons based on either a certain search distance or number of neighbors or contiguity, how they are connected. So we have to build that up under tools, weights, and create. This will launch the weights file creation where we can select a variable, here the ID, the individual cell ID, and we can create a distance-based weights matrix here. And 0 0.1 is going to be automatically defined because that's the nearest distance between any two cells uh, based on the size of the cells. So in this case, uh, we'll run our first analysis using that 0 0.1. So that means uh, any neighbors in that search distance will be the, the immediate four neighbors to any cell. As soon as we create this, we're asked to name it as a GWT, or a Geoda Weights file. And so here, I'm going to call this 01DD, decimal degrees at the end. And this tells me that uh, that's a 01, the same size as the file, uh, without the decimal point. And so now I've successfully created a weights matrix that I can assign to whatever analysis I perform. So I can close this dialog box, and now I'm ready to perform the Geddes and Ord statistic. That's going to be performed under the space pull-down under local G statistics. The first thing we have to assign is what variable are we asking if it's spatially clustered? So in this case, we're asking if our outbreak count is clustered on the landscape. So that's going to be my x variable or my variable of interest. Next, we're going to be asked to identify whether we want to calculate the GI statistic, where i is excluded from the calculation, or the GI star. And in this example, we're going to use the GI star. So i is included in the calculation. We're going to ask to show the significance maps. We're going to use the row standardized weights. And when we perform this, it's very quickly going to produce two maps for us. First, a map here, uh, the blue and red map that describes areas of high and low clustering, and the associated probability values 
for those cells. So recall that the GI values are calculated to z-score to estimate uh, significance. One thing we often want to do is be able to take these results out to our desktop GIS environment to create a map in QGIS or ArcGIS. You can do that by saving the results that were calculated here. So I'm going to right click in the map window and I'm going to select save results and I'm going to select GI star or G star so that'll give me the G score value the cluster category which is the not significant high and low in the background and that pseudo probability value that corresponds to the green maps on our right and so we'll add a value there and then we can name this so I'm going to call this G01 to remind me that my weights matrix was set to 01 decimal degrees and I'm going to set it after the last variable. This way when I perform the get a statistic again uh, these will be in an order that I uh, can follow easily. I'm going to add my G01P Uh, sorry, G01 Clust. It just reminded me that's the, the cluster assignment. And I'm going to add G01P for a P value. Now these variables will be assigned and I can go and map them in another GIS system or perform the get a st statistic again with another distance matrix and then evaluate clustering at different distances.